We have our very good friends Stephanie and Philip here, who also happen to be fellow YouTubers, chateau owners, and a couple. We thought it was the perfect moment to discuss the ups and downs of chateau YouTubing life. We asked our patrons to send us some questions, but we didn't want the usual boring ones, so we said, send us your juiciest questions, ones that we've never answered before. You start with the harmless ones, and then harmless. if it gets later in the day, then we... Yeah. Actually, we should have... We should have done this with wine and then it would have got even more <laughs> spicy. True. The Calvados. Yeah, exactly. What has been your most rewarding aspect of owning a chateau so far? Maybe meeting the love of my life there. Oh, that's true, actually. Oh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> I don't know, what would you say? What would well, be... now it's hard for me to, you know, to come up with something <laughs> equally nice. Um, to experience uh, a life close to you day and night and oh my God. working and come just, on no, I'm just, I'm just, I just made it up I hate working with you <laughs> yes <laughs> no. Um, no let me think yeah. the, the, the most rewarding is you said yesterday when you work in a chateau you you create something which is you, you participate at something which is bigger than yes. yourself and yeah. which bigger will then yourself, yeah. somebody else will take over at one point exactly and, yes. and that's it's like you know, you're, good, you're custodian of the building and yes Doing something to help future generations yeah. at the same time as yeah. living your own life. You're creating something, you're leaving something a little bit more beautiful yeah. than you found it, yeah. something exactly. that could have disappeared. Yeah. And I think it's interesting um, that we're talking about all the future generations, but I also think that even the people that are living in the village here now are really appreciative, for example, of the restoration of the yep. facade and... Yeah. You find yeah. you bring joy to others. Yeah. And especially with the channels as well. Yeah. It goes even beyond the Absolutely. immediate community. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Okay, can you share any funny or memorable anecdotes from your experiences at the Chateau? Oh, there have been many. I mean, I'm, I don't know why, but the first one that's come to my head was actually a really horrible thing that happened. And it was when um, Jamie, who was this really oh, lovely God. volunteer that stayed yeah. for ages, he was trying to open a bottle of champagne with a saber, yeah. you know, as you do, because why would you open it any other way? And so he sabered the top of the champagne bottle, but because it had been in the sun, apparently it must always be super cold if yeah. you're going to do that, if you're know, thinking of doing that at home, mm -hmm. um, it exploded. <gasps> and he had a terrible cut right here, so we were terrified because we're over 45 minutes from the nearest A&E. So we jumped in the car. Amory, thank goodness, is so strong. He had a tourniquet that meant he was more uh, um, in danger of just <laughs> losing the wrist from the tourniquet <laughs> than he was from any blood loss. <laughs> I got him to the hospital. But what was really funny is because we were all in black tie, like yeah. long evening dresses, we oh, ran in. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's X-rated. Ziggy. Ziggy, she's engaged. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Philip is right next to yes. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we, yeah, we ran in entirely dressed up. Yeah. And they didn't even look at his wound. They looked up and said... Champagne saber, no. and you think only in France. <laughs> they know this. At A and E, do they just look at you and go, "Yeah, champagne saber." <laughs> is, it, is it known to be dangerous? Yes. Ah, yes. <laughs> I think even the chateau injuries can sometimes be quite, you know, very French, very specifically yes. chateau. Right. Yes. Do you have one, Anna? Yes, it was also that when we were re renovating yes. um, at the beginning, you had to remove some old pipes in our kitchen. You were just like, it was just some small wires that were, you know, looked like, you know, normal electric old wires. There was a wire I had to cut and it was the size of an electrical cable mm -hmm. and it was upstairs. And I, I used an angle grinder to cut it because right. uh, I just had an angle grinder for other jobs. And I just said, oh, there's another cable, an electrical cable. I knew no more electrics. I cut it. As mm -hmm. soon as I cut it, I hear <laughs> And I'm there and I hold my hand and I couldn't imagine what it could be, like a, there's some pressure and I said, is that, is that a cable? And, and there was also a pipe that I cut before and I thought, thought that maybe this, this airflow comes mm. from the pipe and it has nothing to do with it right. because it was just a thin cable. As I would. And then I called Benoit, our captain, and said, Benoit, what, what, in your opinion, what is it? This is so strange. There's suddenly a pressure going And he shouted, gas, gas, gas. Oh. <laughs> And we ran, opened the windows, um, and I had still, you know, my, my angle grinder. You know, when you <gasps> angle grind the, the cable, there is like sparks everywhere. I almost blew the chateau up. Yeah. But it became a running gag after from Benoit, obviously. I had to, I had to endure, endure a lot of jokes. Yeah. And yeah. you're no longer allowed to use an angle grinder. And I'm, I'm, I'm really scared <laughs> of angle grinder. Whenever I cut a pipe, whatever it is, I double check or I ask myself, 
what could be the worst possible thing in that pipe if I cut it now? <laughs> is there something? Mm, this is an interesting question. How do you approach editing your videos to maintain a cohesive storyline and keep viewers engaged? Well, I think we were talking about this and saying that we all have quite different styles. Yeah. Well, you yeah, guys are doing completely dailies. different. I don't come up with any storylines because I wouldn't have time to anyway. I, I have to film what is happening yeah. that day. So we will sometimes think, oh, we haven't been to a book for a while. People yeah. like it when we do that. Let's maybe do that. But generally we're doing that anyway. So no, I, I just film what's happening. And I try to film in the order of the day because yeah. otherwise it takes far too long to edit. Yeah. In the past, if I was doing one a week, I could film a little bit each day and then I could make it into a little storyline. Yeah. So it was totally different, but I haven't got time for that anymore. Yeah. And with like the Chateau Tours and stuff that I edit, mm -hmm. really very much just looking through everything because that's the way I do it. And then I realize halfway through like, oh, this is where it's going. You know what I mean? You yes, it comes to you as you're editing. And then you can sort of, you have to go through it again, at least I have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then re-edit to the sort of story that you've realized you want to tell. But, yeah. but what about you, Philip? Because you, you really do spend days. We film about three days a week and then we start editing. Mm -hmm. So, and I edit two days a week. Okay. For a vlog that's not much longer than yours, hmm. which indicates that I spend way much, way too much time. <laughs> no, no, you're a perfectionist. I, I can't. Yeah, be, I'm, I'm not. I'm not you moving. because I I come from a filmmaker background, so mm -hmm. I'm used to work in a specific way, and it was really hard since the beginning for me to switch into something more youtube like. So. I mean, you do put a lot of time into the post production of like the you know the color grading and the right. sound and no, and I wonder we were talking about this, but whether we could ever try doing dailies. Um, because you've kind of, you've tempted yeah. us now with, yeah. you know, telling us yeah. how it is. And I think it would be interesting because I think it could learn how to be more spontaneous yeah. and less, less precious about framing. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's nice, but it's also sometimes not necessary. Yeah. I mean, watching you guys, it is a bit like daunting scary and daunting because mm. you're working until two in the morning to get <laughs> your vlogs out and you're like always on it. And also I kind of never really wanted to go into doing the vlogging just because I thought, oh, well, our life is not so exciting. Like we do live in a chateau yeah. and that's exciting. And some of the renovation works we do and the, some of the projects we're doing are exciting, but sometimes daily life is quite mundane. It's, you know, taking the kids to school or going to the supermarket. Yeah. And this is what we thought. Yeah. Daily life is just not going to be interesting yeah. enough for people because we're not Dan. We're not yes. restoring a, yeah. a ruined chateau single-handedly yeah. every yeah. day. So I didn't think it would work and I did it as an exercise for the same sort of reason that you're thinking, yeah. how will it change my editing? Yes. Will it speed yeah. things up? How will it be? Okay. And then after a while you realize that you're, what's mundane to you is not mundane to others. And that if yeah. we watch somebody else's daily life in another part of yeah. the world, we'd probably find that completely fascinating yes. that they think it's mundane. Yeah. You did film yourself doing the laundry. Oh, I've totally so. filmed myself <laughs> doing the laundry. <laughs> yes. I, we film the supermarket all the time. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. Yes, yeah. we film what we're doing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we said that recently we said we would never film a supermarket because we would think it's completely uninteresting. But it's true that we watch mm. sailing vlogs a lot, mm. and we love when they go to other countries into supermarkets. Right. Yeah. We, we think it's interesting, yeah. but we think our supermarket is what we do every day. So, yeah. well, and I'm sure day. when you're in another country, you oh, love it's, going it's to enjoyable. the supermarket. Absolutely. You want you to like see, see the yeah. product with producers. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, it could be interesting to try. Is it going to be something we would do in the future? Honestly, I don't think so. Well, but let's see. I think we have to test it and we try. We have to test it. But a lot yeah. of people ask, oh, I would be so nice if you had mm -hmm. more than one vlog a week. Just pausing the questions quickly whilst I say a big thank you to Ferreo Sweden for sponsoring this week's video with this ad. You'll probably remember me telling you how much I've been enjoying using the UFA3 by Ferreo Sweden, a deep facial hydration device. I've always kept my skincare routine very simple, which is why I've become such a fan and I've been using it for the last three months because it couldn't be easier. And there are eight different facial treatments to choose from catering to various skin needs. My new favorite is the Glow Addict with natural pearl extract. The soothing, warming hyperinfusion and the T-Sonic pulsation helps the skin absorb ingredients and make it more radiant. Plus, you get to enjoy a little relaxing massage for your face at the same time. The UFA3 has an integrated LED therapy. The green wavelengths of light help to even out skin tone and after using it, my skin always feels hydrated and has a healthy glow. You can use an app for guided treatments, but there is also an offline mode, which you can personalize. 
So why not treat yourself to Radiant Skin? This product is rarely on discount, but if you purchase it now using the link below, then you will get a 30% discount. Plus, for the first 50 people, you will get an extra 10% if you use the code 10 renovate. Y'all are from other countries other than France. Do you get homesick for your old stomping grounds? London, I, yeah, absolutely. But as long as I can go regularly, I'd yeah. far rather live in the countryside. I'd far rather live in France. Um, but I think you get more homesick for London than you do for the <laughs> Netherlands. Well, yeah. well, it's more, I don't know, like, I think because we also stay in, in London a fair bit, it feels like that is part of home as well now, I suppose. Yeah. But as in the Netherlands, I get more homesick for the foods. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it's not terribly, well, I wouldn't say anything about the Netherlands, sorry. You know that. <laughs> Um, it's a wonderful country. Yeah, well, it's yeah. more like the biscuits that I had growing up and the, I don't know, the, the, the what else was there? Isn't your mayonnaise, oh my, my goodness, mayonnaise. and your apple no, sauce. I oh, really, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm the same with things like Marmite, and right. I don't know if it's since Brexit, but our local supermarkets, they used to have a small English mm. section with Marmite. with Marmite. For 100 euros. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was quite expensive, expensive. But I was always happy because I had my yeah. Marmite. And then in the it's last fun. couple of weeks, they've just stopped stocking it. And it's devastating. And Lily, is she was having She's a meltdown. Delicious. I think it's really hard when you are living in between two places. Mm. Because sometimes I try to imagine myself if I could see myself living in England and bringing the girls up and I do think, oh, it could be, it would maybe be easier in some respect and I would probably maybe um, have more friends or, you know, it would be nice for the girls to go to English school and wear a school uniform and all of those things that I had as a child. But then I think that if we were there, I would miss so many things about life in France. And you don't miss the UK? Um, not in terms of living there, but I love the UK. Yes. Yeah. And I do miss cities. I, I, so Could you I, mention to live in the countryside in the UK? I used to, so I grew up in the yes. countryside in the UK and that's why I love it. Yeah, I could, I could live there. I, I came to France because of the property prices, if I'm completely yes. honest, yeah. and the fact that you can't get chateaus in England yes. and I just yes. love chateaus. And I've really fallen in love with living in France. But I could live in the UK in a heartbeat. I could live in either country. Yeah. I love both. But what about you? What about Italy? I miss Italy a lot. I mean, I mean, I miss the South Tyrol, which is this northern region mm. in Italy where I come from, a German-speaking region. Yeah. We have mountains mm. and we have seasons, two things. I mean, you have seasons here, but the winter is basically rain. Yeah, it's not snow. And then snow. you wait for the summer. It's not snow. <laughs> and we have a beautiful winter season where you can go skiing. And if it was only for me, I would be really tempted to find a property somewhere in northern Italy, probably. Yeah. And that, that could lead on to my next question, which was going to be, um, somebody had asked, or oh, I, I think I decided to ask this question actually, because I was interested. Yeah. If you could live anywhere else other than France, where would it be? Uh, London and Venice, I think. Oh, Venice. Venice. Oh, it would be, for me, Venice. it would be Venice. Yes. I, and I don't know about you. I think that you like Venice, but not in the same way that I do. I don't know. I really, really like Vienna. Ah. Uh, but maybe, Probably in the UK. If I'm thinking practically, yeah. right? mm -hmm. probably somewhere in the UK. I never think practically. I was going to say, so do you speak, <laughs> how's your Italian? No, 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 no. I don't speak Italian. Nobody um, speaks Italian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not even you. <laughs> You're Italian. Yeah. I think it's a danger to think too practically in life because it stops you from doing amazing things. I love that. You take a leap. I, I love agree. that. Yeah, it's a nice I'm story. definitely too practical. I need to take a leaf out of your book yeah, yeah. and be less <laughs> worried yeah. about things. I remember being in Copenhagen once and just loving the vibes and thinking, oh, this would be the coolest place to live. Um, I also had the same with Amsterdam because I have a friend, a friend of mine who lives in Amsterdam and I thought the same. I thought this is such a nice lifestyle, like cool vibes. How People about are southern friendly. Countries? Southern countries. Yes. You mean like... Because you, 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 you know, it's all countries in the far north. Yeah, I don't know. I, I... You're attracted to the north. Yes, the winters are dark and the weather's yeah. probably not always great. But I think because I've grown up in England with mm. quite rainy weather. Yeah, right. It's not It's not something that I find I, I have trouble with. I know yep. you do. Philip really suffers from the weather here, but for me, it's quite normal and I quite like it. I like this mm. whole hygge, you know, it's cut, like cold. So we put the cozy yeah. fire on yeah. and candles. I like it too, but I don't know. I don't need six months of hygge or seven months. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, three months would be fine. <laughs> what are your pet peeves with each other? Where to start? <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? Do you want me to? No, I have so many. I have, I have so many. 
I, I hate the way that when you don't know the next part of a story you're telling, you keep repeating the part you're on in different ways. I hate that too. It drives me completely insane. So say, so, so we were going to Iguhand, uh, so on the way to Iguhand. I mean, it was a beautiful uh, journey to Iguhand, and and obviously the trees are out on the way to Iguhand, and we were going to Iguhand, and then and then finally you decide what you're going to say about when we've got to Iguhand, and I'm just going completely mad in the background. No, I think that for you, it's similar, but it's actually. Oh, it's like almost the opposite. So with you, you don't listen, which is probably why I repeat it as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, just mean in general, but like I'll, I'll be, be telling a story or I'll be driving, for example, and uh, so just, just responding like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then after like the, the third, uh-huh, uh, I go, what did I just say? Because I realized I should pull out her phone and I don't know how long it's been there. And she goes, uh-huh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm looking forward to hearing okay. yours. I, I know my pet peeve with you. And I don't know why, I've only just noticed it. Because you've probably done it for the whole time I've been with you. But you have the loudest sneeze I've ever heard. And it really irritates me. It's like, it's, it's just like a trumpet. It's like you want everybody, I think it's attention seeking, not personally. <laughs> You want everybody to look at you and to say, are you okay? Bless you, sir. Bless you. It's like, a choo! Have it's you like, ever asked me if I'm okay after a sneeze? No, I'm just like, do you have <laughs> to sneeze? Here you go, here you go. I'm like, do you now have you... to sneeze so loudly? And, <laughs> yeah, and you I'll, don't. I'll, you tell so. me, no, I have to. That's my natural sneeze. It but is. then, when we were in the airport recently, mm. you did a sneeze and you went, up. Uh, <clears throat> and it you was painful, of... I remember, I suffered from that, yes. And I said, look, you don't need to make a loud noise. And you said, yeah, you said it's... I, I'm sure it's, it's not good. Like a, med um, a doctor would say you should, you know, let it out. Okay, I'm waiting to hear what you have to say <laughs> about me. The most irritating thing oh, no. is that you put dirty dishes in the sink. Oh, that's like not you, that bad. That is horrible. You put, and, I, and when there's like dirty dishes, instead of putting them on top of the dishwasher where you then clean them, you put the thing in, this, in the mm -hmm. bin, and then you, the dishwasher, she puts everything in the sink, which not only renders the sink un un unusable, yeah, but, but also it, the, the sink gets dirty, and you have to wash the sink after. A sink is for washing up. I'm like, yeah, but you don't I... wash them up in the sink. It's not like you put them in there to wash them up, you put them in there to store, to then put them into no, the dishwasher. No, uh, yeah, I just want to clear the work surface. Yeah, I don't that's like that's to have the dish... That's a dish, the... this is a, it's, it's meant for dirty dishes to then put them in the dishwasher. Yeah. I'm well, hearing that Anna's the perfect woman. Yeah. Because the only pet peeve you have with Anna <laughs> is that instead of stacking them. Yeah, but it's so bad. You can't imagine how bad it is. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah, that is. Uh, yeah. But I get annoyed with you when you then take them out and put them all back on the side. Yeah, because I need to use the sink. That's what the sink is for. For, for if you, And the other thing is, if you then open the, the tap, the tap goes the... it goes everywhere. <sighs> and then not only have you water everywhere, you also have the, the rest of the food, which was on the plates everywhere. Yeah. I can see you've taken this to heart. Like you've you've been through every oh, single yes. possible permutation. Uh, what was your favourite video that you've ever filmed? Oh, I know which one. Uh, it was the very first shuttered tour we did together, which was here. Oh, oh good oh, answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> nice, Philip. <laughs> okay. Do you have one? It's probably one of the sailing logs. Because we enjoyed sailing. We enjoyed it so much and somehow we managed still to film, but it didn't feel like we have to work. We still enjoyed the holidays yeah. and we filmed and it felt perfect and I liked the video. So it was nothing the to result. do with Chateau. So basically what you're saying is you want to become a sail I YouTuber. want to become a sail YouTuber, absolutely. Yeah. No, I didn't say that, but I, that's, that was my favorite videos. And uh, probably the first one as well, we enjoyed making it because it was, um, it was painful to make. I still, I don't, I can't watch it. I find we are really bad yeah, on it. Yeah, we but, are terrible. Um, but it, you know, it, it triggered something. It started everything. It started yeah. everything. Yeah, so. I think of my first one very fondly. Yeah. I still remember in it, Jerry walks through with a broken loose seat <laughs> going, oh, I don't know what the people in Bon Mama have been eating, but they destroyed <laughs> the loose seat. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. But it's difficult, isn't it, to make the first one? It, it, it's painful and it's, it takes a lot of courage to make a first video. You need to put aside all your pride. You, you don't need to yeah. be scared yes. to make mistakes. Just, there was some advice I heard from somebody on YouTube. Um, I can't remember who it was now. I'd love to credit them. But they said, if you want to become a YouTuber, go and make 100 terrible videos. Mm -hmm. Just go and do it. Mm -hmm. Make them, put Very them out, advice, not yeah. care about it, and then you'll get good. Yeah. yeah. What is your favourite video? 
Um, I would probably agree with you. The travel travel videos. Oh, you like the travel videos as well. I well, I love traveling, yeah. and I think that when I will look back, there's some very happy memories of yeah. like family traveling. Yeah. Um, really, like when I tried to think back last year about my most treasured moment, it was our sailing holiday with the girls. Here we go. No, <laughs> I know, I know. I'm being like transformed into a. Yeah. No, but I think it was just so special. It was a challenge. It was we were out of our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. We were in an incredibly beautiful place um, with the girls, traveling around. And we had some really, like, some special time just with the girls. Um, yeah. And I think we were quite relaxed. And we, we didn't really have to think, oh, what are we filming? Or mm. what are we, you know, what can we do this week? What's going to be, like, the... We Most just, interesting thing. We mm. just kind of filmed some little bits of our travel. And for us, I think because it was a new experience, we also saw it through fresh new eyes. Right. Yeah. And let's be honest, we all look at the numbers of our vlogs. Yes. Would you be able to say what's the worst performing video of last year? Is there a video that didn't do well? That you're disappointed with? And you're disappointed with because you think it should it deserved more views? I get disappointed. I, I don't know what the worst one of last year was, but I do get disappointed when we'll do something standalone, which is usually not at La Land, yes. which I feel, I know, is a better video than yes. many of the ones that we filmed at La Land, but it gets fewer views. Mm -hmm. How to make a proper British cup of tea. Oh, we were laughing <laughs> oh, about I love that. that. Oh, I love Why that. did yes. that not take off? Uh, uh, you would think uh, everyone had a go at me. Uh, had an opinion as well. <laughs> everyone was angry because it was a really short video. It was like five, five or six minutes, yeah. and I had no time to film anything else that day, but I wanted to put a video out, yeah. and people felt cheated by it. No. You wanted me to have done my normal sort of video. Yeah. And then this is what, three years later? Yeah. And suddenly, now, it's climbing. I'm getting loads of new subscribers from it. It's like, how did that happen? <laughs> My six minute cup of tea video. And what about you? I think we called it Escape to Our Winter Wonderland. And it was a, we went in the snow in the mountains. Mm. And I really loved it because it was such a nice day again and the kids had fun. We enjoyed filming we enjoyed, it. Yeah. We had fun and I think it's a good video. It's entertaining but to watch. But it's not at the yes. chateau. It's not at the chateau. Um, maybe the thumbnail is not so good, but uh, it really, really didn't do well. We had probably 30, 40% less views than, than usual. Mm. And I hope people will go watch it if you see it. Watch it <laughs> over here. Do you think you will ever retire from YouTube? Oh, this is something we talk about quite a lot because yeah. I don't ever want to retire. And you get quite horrified. <laughs> <But> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, it's not like that. It's because you, maybe if in the future you probably have to change your um, work routine. The work-life balance. Yes. Oh. No, but when you love something, it doesn't feel like work, even if it's taking all your time. Yeah. I can't imagine wanting to retire. I also can't imagine why people would want to watch me, like, doddering around, goodness knows, <laughs> friend, good yeah, friend. half the time in, in La Land, half the time in Venice when I'm 95, so I have no idea whether people would be interested I in that. I love that, imagine that there will be like, yeah, a 95 year old step <laughs> yeah. YouTubing. Morning, <laughs> a bit stiff today. Mm -hmm. What has been the most rewarding thing for yourselves um, after buying your chateau? What would you say is the most rewarding thing? Oh, YouTube, but, but yeah. buy it a million miles. Uh, after buying the chateau, mm -hmm. the most rewarding thing is suddenly this incredible connection and an ability to monetize the chateau in a way that I couldn't do at yeah. the beginning. Yeah. And the possibilities, because I know we privately have been talking about the possibilities that come when you're able to earn a living properly like this in your own mm -hmm. home without having to go out and work somewhere else. And you're also doing something you're very passionate about and you said it doesn't even feel like work. So yes. that mm. is rewarding. What would you say the most rewarding thing? Of oh, definitely as well. Definitely Be being able to to be creative in, in a different way that we expected at the, at the beginning. Yeah. It wasn't the plan to, to mm. make YouTube, to make yeah. videos. And it just added so many new layers of, of uh, creativity and, and of opportunity as well. And the power of social media, which yeah. could save a lot of buildings in this yeah. country. Because the, the tragedy is seeing buildings fall down and seeing, and that's I think what the most rewarding bit for me is, is uh, the fact that you feel part of preserving heritage and that's, uh, yeah. and, and making it hopefully even a bit better here and there. You yeah. Know? How much does it cost to heat a chateau um, and 
What is the average room temperature in winter? Um, ah, so yeah. it's free to heat our chateau yeah. because we have no heating, yes. but we do plug in electric heaters exactly. and our, oil, oil. Oh, yeah. Yeah. our electricity bill is about 3,000 euros a month. <gasps> it's just... No. But it's because we are plugging in electric heaters. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But you are, you're in the process of installing a heating system. Yes, yes. but yeah. we've been told that once that's installed, our heating will be about... 20,000 a year and okay. so although our electricity will go down we'll still be at at least 3,000 a month. Yeah, yeah every room in the chateau to 20 degrees or something or 18 degrees. And probably 17, 18. So degrees. we probably won't do that ever other than uh, at Christmas. Yes, example. yes, yeah. when we've got people in the yeah. house. Yeah. We'll keep it all on low, very low. What about you? What's the heating with you? We pay, we still have oil heating mm -hmm. that was originally here oh. and we didn't even have to change the a boiler, what is it called? The yeah, the boiler. The boiler. Oh, yes, you're lucky. Yeah. yeah. Because it, even though there were only, I think, six radiators here in three rooms, and now we have what, 40 or something, mm. yeah. it was strong enough. Oil is such wow. a, it's not very sustainable, but it's such a beautiful energy because mm. it's so, so, you know, so, so, so condensed, and, and even this small machine produces enough heat output for, to heat a chateau. So in the winter, we, we heat a couple of rooms where we sleep, and, and we try to keep the temperature down. When we had the, guest, the bed and breakfast going, so we had to heat all the rooms. I think we paid about ten thousand a year mm. in okay. heating cost. Um, if we would, if for now, we pay probably six to seven thousand for us as a family, with only a couple of rooms. Mm -hmm. And I, I literally go every evening and check all the radiators. Right. Anna, Anna always comes in and turns all the radiators mm -hmm. on. Yep, I go me. there and pay, turn all the radiators off. In London, off. <laughs> I do that. Um, and we looked into more eco-friendly systems of, mm -hmm. of heating, but the problem is there are there's a lot of systems for, for individual houses, yeah. um, for small, mid-sized, big houses, but shutters are so big, you need, it, it's really hard to find an efficient system which is affordable and safe and proven to work. Yeah, that's right. Well, I made a very expensive mistake yeah. when I first arrived at Lalande because we installed a geothermal heating yeah. system because we wanted to do something that was better yes. for the environment. Mm -hmm. Of course. I know it got to 10 degrees maximum in the chateau wow. in winter, yeah. absolutely maximum going full. And so now we're replacing it with gas, which I didn't really want to do. Yeah. Um, we also have these wood burners that work really well instead mm. of having, mm. I miss the open fires, but these oh, yeah. are, you know, we don't have a huge amount of heat loss going mm. up the chimney. Oh, it saves us a lot of money because we really, in the winter, we it's turn awesome. these on and within an hour. We don't even need to put yeah, the radiators they're great. on. Yeah. We're doing the same thing yeah. at home. How have your families adapted to the public, their public personas? Are you recognised about town or in your travels? Best, worst aspect of being YouTubers? Ooh. I think we're usually recognised when we're at anything to do with um, art history or anything like that. So yeah, auction houses. auction houses. Or like if we're out to look at other castles or uh, yes. stately homes. So we like and airports. Anywhere Apples. that the Brits are travelling, <laughs> yes. yes, and we get noticed more. Yeah. But my mother gets recognised far more than I do. Really? Jerry gets recognised more than anyone else. Yeah. You get spotted before me. Um, I think I just sort of <laughs> blend into the background. My mother's taken really well mm. to being recognised. Jerry absolutely loves it and is head to toe in tartan most of the time. <laughs> um, well, we've had a couple of instances that took us by surprise. Oh, Two yeah. years ago, and some, but we were on like a, a, a tiny beach and we thought this was like sort of heaven and then there was a woman that sort of came up and i thought she was going to tell us that we weren't allowed to be there we were sunbathing so we like, were yeah the yeah there. relaxing <laughs> the kids were playing in the water and then she was like oh and really friendly it wasn't yeah wasn't and really friendly and she and she and she recognized us which was just i think really strange we I were not expecting that, that on each Journey, we get recognized once, that's basically the rule. Right. When, when, we go, when I go somewhere in another country or so on, mm. for a week, then at least once we get I recognized. always feel very awkward about Anna it. Anna feels awkward about it. Um, Most surprising one uh, was in South Africa, where we were in a tiny little cafe in this tiny town. And uh, we were having a chat with Percy, where we were talking about how we are going to restructure the company and everything that had gone wrong the previous year, everything had gone right. All you know, of the finances, everything, everything, everything. And uh, at the end of it, uh, everyone goes, oh my God, <laughs> Stephanie from the Shattered Diary? They've been <laughs> on the table next to us the oh, entire, they'd, they'd heard the entire uh, planning session, uh, but... Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> the same weekend, we went to another tiny town. There's a little supermarket, and, and, and we get a we're having an argument about something. At home oh, a couple of times we've been having a right old I argument when someone just goes, "Hello, oh, isn't it Stephanie and Philip?" Like, 
Are you out? <laughs> Darling! <laughs> <laughs> well, so what would be the worst thing about being a YouTuber? That people walk into your... For me, it's that people walk, think it's fine to walk into your property. Yeah. Mm. Even though there's a sign and saying it's, you know, it's our house, private yeah. property. Um, especially after having shut down the guest house. Yeah. There's no, it, no less, it does happen less. Now. It happens much less now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, the worst thing about being a YouTuber has got nothing to do with YouTube at all. And it's got everything to do with just the reality of running a business mm. and a business in another country. It's mm. all the paperwork that goes with that. And in France, that's a lot of paperwork. And we employ people at La Land as well. So it's all the employment paperwork and everything else. I'm not great at that. And yeah. that's my least favorite part of having a proper yeah. business. Um, so that's, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Anna? Yeah, I would say the sort of mix of trying to keep some privacy of you know, not you uh, wanting to share and and be authentic and and you know explain what we're doing in our lives and sharing a lot, but then at the same time keeping some element of privacy. And I have like a hard time sometimes to know what should we share or what shouldn't mm -hmm. we, and protecting a bit the kids. I don't know if I really want them into in the videos too much and. So I think it's just about finding that balance and, and knowing sort of what's the right approach. We live in our workplace. We are working together. And I think sometimes that's a lot with, you know, on our couple, on our relationship. I think the, most, the thing you most hate is to have to work with me. Yeah. Every day. I should have said my pet peeve is working with <laughs> Philip. And it, when he tells me he likes to direct, and Philip is telling me, Oh, can you stop saying um all the time? That's not true. Because well, he has to edit it out. It. And I'm like, this is how I talk. <laughs> this is me naturally. I um a lot. <laughs> no, I've spent eight hours one day just removing the ums from someone that was showing us around a building that I was filming. It wasn't me, was it? It was not you. It was me. So all the overlays and then you literally just spend hours removing yeah. every um. And now imagine you filmed um. with the same person the next day. It's really hard, not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> <It's like> a... <laughs> I'm a reluctant YouTuber. I'm just here for... Well, the, the reluctant YouTuber. That should yeah. be your, your channel now. So I'm not sure I want to invest my time in... <laughs> Yeah. But the worst are not the ums, it's uh, the French, actually. I'm sorry to say this yeah. to the entire French nation, because they don't stop vocalizing yes. whilst I'm saying, so uh, but je sais pas, on pourrait peut-être faire le. <laughs> and that's a nightmare to edit out. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's a funny one, I had to realize that. It's a good one. Yeah. Okay, I think. I think that was. Is good. there any any things you want to know? Oh, yeah. what? You haven't asked us. You want to... I think we asked you oh, all yeah. of those questions at midnight it's... over cognac. Yeah, <laughs> no, this has been glorious. Oh, I really it's loved it. It's been so much fun. Yeah, thank you so much for answering all these questions yeah. and for your time. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. nice to be with people who are going through exactly the yes, same. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Can definitely we come get soon? together. Can we come visit you? Yeah, yeah. please, as yeah. soon yeah. as you like. To see. The girls yeah. are yeah. definitely. They they had such a good time. Lily was like. I want to go again, can we go? Like, and she talked about the peacocks, she remembered everything. They're waiting yeah. for her. Okay. All five of them. Remember, if you want a couple. Yes. Oh yeah, you're trying to get us yeah. to keep trying. With us. Keep trying. I like that. I, I like peacocks. I really, yeah. really think about it. Let's see. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I see what happened there. <laughs> let's see, let's see how, if Ziggy likes them. Yeah. And we have to have Lance a lot of Ziggy meat. We hope you enjoyed this very different vlog. Thanks so much for watching and a big thanks to our patrons who make these videos possible.